how do you realize that you how do you realize your calling towards cinema and then uh, gradually so into you documentary film making so basically i think i must have been very young getting on now i'm getting old now but i was very young when i saw a mebu khan film called aan and in aan i remember one scene in which you had um nimmi who was i don't think even you know who nimmi is but nimmi was an old actress and she's running through the fields mustard fields and she's singing aaj mere man mein koi bansuri bajaye and in the distance you have a black horse and dilip kumar was sitting on the horse so i don't know whether it was dilip kumar that i was in love with or cinema but that was the beginning of my interest in films i think it was dilip kumar then anyway by the time it all started i realized if film making is very complicated and complex and you have a certain type of personality and either you go for a feature films and I, I, we were talking about it earlier when feature films you have to imagine a world and you invent a world and that world has to have a certain logic but if you're not good at that kind of imagination it is better to go for documentaries where you record the world where you record what already exists and married to that i was very keen on archiving because i think indian cinema particularly my work was hindi cinema has not been archived properly there have been a uh, very few good interviews with old timer directors not even when they were winning hundreds of awards and their films were doing well there were no filmed interviews and even though they were 16 mm cameras and so on but nobody thought to interview them not in book form not in film form so when i started doing this work i was very keen to do that and my inspiration for archiving came from a gentleman called mr pk nair i don't know if you've heard about him but he was the first uh, founding director of the national film archives in pune and nair sab was like a completely a guru to me and he knew everything about film and you would say to him uh, i need the clip from jangli in the scene in which shami kapoor sings chahe mujhe koi jangli kahe and he could immediately tell you which real number it was on so he knew not just the basic stuff like that what cinema but he saw i think maybe two films a day for years and years and he had copious notes he would make notes about everything he'd see and i think when you look at something you should be able to know what you're looking at and therefore writing down what you see how you understand it is very important that develops your mind for working as a documentary filmmaker or even a feature film what do you think about documentary filmmaking is it a dying art form because actually it's the opposite documentary film making even in india has become much more respected than it was before documentary film making was always associated with educational films boring films by films division about how to cook an egg how to drive a car all educational stuff or news reels and now it has its own life and actually the best documentaries today are storytelling I don't know if you've seen a documentary called Meet the Freedmans. Now Freedman was amazing. It's about a family and you it's amazing. You think you're watching a feature film. And I say a lot of feature films today are taking the ideas from documentaries and filming it like a documentary. So there's much more fusion between the two forms. Plus I think in India people are getting more and more interested in documentaries. Maybe not everybody, but more than before. in the west before documentaries were never released in the cinema but sometimes you see documentaries and you see big directors who have made them and they are shown i think even on the web series and netflix and amazon films like the wild country or whatever it was called or the other documentaries on oj simpson and so on they have been very very popular so the documentary form is not dying i think it's actually growing and growing and if you look at youtube and you see all these home videos that people are making they are documentaries they're documenting their lives 
they're not acting their lives they're telling you what they ate last night and wh where they're going to sleep so, so it's a load of nonsense going on but there is a lot of documentary if you look at Twitter and Facebook this recording this obsessive sharing of every bit of your life is like documenting your life do I really care sorry to be rude but do I care if you've had ice cream last night or not not really I don't care but it's on Twitter there's a shot there's an ice cream bowl and we are all supposed to say Are wah, ice cream so I mean that is what is documenting what you're doing every minute it's a very different perspective I don't know where you put it like I think it's very narcissistic what is happening is that in the old days, you know the whole myth of the narcissist is somebody who would, uh, would look into, it is a Greek myth, uh, look into a river and see the reflection of himself and was very happy with it. And to me, Twitter and Facebook has a lot of narcissism is in it. And there's a feeling that everybody, my friends and other people, should be interested in me. I don't know whether it's of great interest. I don't think I would even read a... Twitter page of an, a famous actor. I don't think it's interesting to know what they're doing every minute. Really. It's like being in a closed circuit television and the jailer is watching you. I'm not sure that's f for me very entertaining. So, how, do you, how important is it to document correctly? And how important is documentary in that sense? I think documenting is important if there's somebody who has created something. So if a director, a filmmaker has made a film and you want to document it, it's a very good idea. But you document his work, not what he's eating, at, whether he likes biryani or palau. That is less interesting. You have to document cities. How is a city's landscape growing? Now there's going to be, I think, a new coastal road. I'm sure there's no documentary made about what the road looks like today. If you film what it looks like today, in 40 years that footage will be very valuable because they will not remember what it was. So th you have to understand and prioritize what is going to have an impact in history. You know, I mean, certain things will always have a, a role in society in the future. Would you say that uh, documentaries are not, won't be valued as much in the present than really in the future? I think even in the present they're valued, uh, but I think in the future they'll be more valued. Now if you look at like history programs, they are entirely dependent on archive footage. If you talk about the Gandhiji today, you will see every shot that has been filmed of Gandhiji. So somebody knew that this man should be filmed. It was history that knew it, the, the, the contemporary history when he was alive, but also filmmakers had a feeling this should be, he should, is an important thing that's happening. And obviously it was, it was the independence of this country. So today when you talk about the period of independence and the freedom struggle, that footage becomes key. Because you can't only have people talking about something. Documentary is showing and you are seeing. And these two things are about cinema. So, who are going to you is the one Indian and international document, best documentary film? There was a, a, a documentary filmmaker who started many, many years ago, I think in the 70s or 80s, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact date he started, Anand Patwadan. Now, he makes very political films, and through his his own political standpoint, he's documented the different phases and the changes in Indian society. So for me, I think he's a very unusual and a unique voice. You may or you may not agree with him, but he has been documenting the changes in society. In, uh, in America, I think there was a man called Fred Wiseman. I think, I don't know, but I'm pretty, sh I'm not sure he's still alive. He's a lawyer and he decided to document different institutions. So what he would do is that for months and years, he would just put his camera in a hospital and film everything that was happening there and then edit the whole thing. They were fascinating. They were like feature films because the dramas that go on in a railway station or in a hospital are unbelievable. 
<laughs> more more uh, human than uh, the feature films. And Wiseman, if you haven't seen his films, please watch. I'm sure on YouTube there are lots. They may be difficult for you to watch because he doesn't cut fast and he really developed what they call observational documentaries, what they used to call fly on the wall. I don't know if you know this term, but it meant that the camera was like a fly on the wall who would be watching everything. And that kind of documentary I like very much when you're observing something. Because after a while, now right now you're interviewing me and I know you're sitting there, I know everyone is sitting here and I know the camera's there. But if you filmed me for many, 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 many hours, there's going to be a point when I don't, I'm not aware that you are here or the camera's here. And that is the meaning of a fly on the wall observational documentary you observe the subject is not observing you you're observing it and how do you do that by them forgetting there's a camera <laughs>